हेलो ऑल वेलकम टू अ प्रोजेक्ट कॉन्क्रीट कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेंथ प्रोडिक्शन सो ना इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट व्हाट विल बी डूइंग विल बी प्रोडिक्टिंग द करेक्ट कॉन्क्रीट कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेंथ यूजिंग डिफरेंट मशीन लर्निंग एंड ऑटो मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स सो ना बेसिकली यू मस्ट हैव सी हर्ड दैट दिस इज अ बेसिकली अ कोर प्रोजेक्ट राइट दिस इज नॉट दिस अ वेरी ऑफ टॉपिक प्रोजेक्ट हु डज अ कॉन्क्रीट प्रोजेक्ट राइट बट इन द फील्ड ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग और इन द फील्ड ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग और द कोर ब्रांचेज द मशीन लर्न इन वे इन वेयर मशीन लर्निंग इज एप्लीकेबल वी कैन यूज दिस प्रोजेक्ट इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट द मेन मोटिवेशन इज दैट वी ऑल नो दैट कॉन्क्रीट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मटीरियल इन सिविल इंजीनियरिंग राइट सो द कॉम्परेटिव कॉन्क्रीट कंप्रेसिव strength is a highly non-linear function of agent ingredients which means that it depends variably it depends on various factors so there are there are several in the ingredients in concrete which are cement blast furnace slag fly ash water super plasticizer and coarse aggregate and fine aggregate these are the basic materials which are used in a concrete the so now moving on what we'll be doing so we'll be trying to predict this different the different concrete strengths of the cement with the help of the ingredient in, information which i told you earlier and given to us so now how we'll be doing it so we'll be using the help of deep learning methods uh, we'll be using kera sequential model to predict the strength then we'll see how you can implement the same thing using the auto keras library which is a auto machine learning library so now moving on what is auto machine learning Auto machine learning enables developers with limited machine learning expertise to train high quality models specific to their business needs. Basically automated machine learning automates the whole model development process and give it to it uh, to the user. There are various automated machine learning uh, libraries but in this we'll be using the AutoKeras. So now what AutoKeras is you must have heard about the Keras library we'll be using it in the project so AutoKeras also is an auto ml system based based which is based on Keras it is developed by the data lab at Texas A&M University the goal of AutoKeras is to make machine learning accessible to everyone okay so there are certain applications for AutoKeras which are the regressor or the image classifier object detection all the things which we do with the Keras library with the deep learning library we can do the same with the help of AutoKeras now what will be the timeline of the project in this project we'll be first doing the data analysis visualizing our data then we'll be doing the data pre processing techniques different techniques to make our uh, data ready for a model uh, different feature engineering techniques then we'll be building our model with the help of deep learning or machine learning techniques then we'll be using the auto keras to see how we can do the same so let's begin hello all welcome to our project concrete compressive strength prediction using deep learning and automated machine learning that is the autocras so now in the introduction section i have already told you why this project is important what is the motivation behind this the same is written here that the concrete is the most important material in civil engineering and it cost varies in a long non linear function so what we will be doing we'll be predicting or we'll be making a model to predict the com compressive strength of this cement So now there is some data characteristic. The actual concrete compressive strength is given in MPa for a given mixture under a specific age was determined from laboratory. This is the data, the data which we have given. Okay. So now we will be seeing what is our data. But the very first thing is the timeline of the project. So now what we will be doing first, we will be doing the data analysis. Then we will be doing the data pre-processing, feature engineering. Then we will be try, try, we will try to build our model. uh using the deep learning techniques uh, and we'll be trying to build a model using the uh, different uh, automa automated machine learning techniques that is the autocras so now let's proceed so very first thing what we'll be doing we'll be importing a libraries so i've imported pandas mat numpy matplotlib uh, these are for uh, various um, uh, visualization and data processing and pre processing techniques so now what uh, what you have to do is uh, in order to import this uh, library in order to Uh, import data in your Google Colab environment. First, you have to import your CSV file in your uh, Google Drive environment. Okay. Then what you have to do? You have to mount your drive. You have to mount your drive. Uh, when you will click on this, when you will click on this link, it this uh, this link mount drive option. It will give you this option. Then you just have to click on this link. Then you have to just authorize your um, authorize your account to give permission so that the Google Col and Google Notebook can. Uh, to so can access your data you just have to copy this authorization link here and paste it here press enter what this will do it will automatically mount your drive then what happens is when your once your drive is mounted as it, as it is written mounted at content drive 
so now when your drive is mounted it is shown here and all the files are here then i'll just copy my file path that is the uh, cement.csv or something of that concrete data.csv i'll just copy the path from finding it here and I, i'll just copy the path like this and i'll paste it here and i'll just read it using the pandas so this was a simple way how you can read your file if you want to see the shape of your file uh, of your data so there are 1030 rows and 9 columns uh, as you can see this is the different uh, attributes given which i mentioned in the uh, introduction part also okay, how the cement is constructed that is the cement blast furnace slag fly ash water superplastizer coarse aggregate fine aggregate age and this is our dependent variable that is the concrete compressive strength so now we'll be doing some data analysis part and the feature engineering data pre-processing techniques model building using auto keras or and uh, uh, keras module in the next sections hello all welcome to our next section of this project so now in this section moving on further from the introduction part and import part we'll be doing the data analysis of our data so now previously what we did is we did the introduction of our data then we saw that how we can import our data in the google collab environment so now in this section we'll be doing the data analysis describing our data visualizing our data and all of those different things so first let us have a look at our data this is our data i have already told you what are the different variables uh, and how they are responsible for the concrete compressive strength prediction so now and this is the shape that means that we have 1030 rows that means 1030 cement data and 9 columns these are in which 8 are independent columns and ninth one is concrete compressive strength that is a dependent column so now what we'll be doing let us describe our data so as we see that all our data are in numerical format so it is very easy for us to describe our data in the form of certain mathematical abbreviations for example we can see that what is the count we can see mean of each and every uh, column and we can see standard deviation we can see what is the maximum value and uh, minimum value then all the, the percentile region so this is a brief outlook numerical out analysis of a data now the same thing I can do that I'll, I can see the info which means in which I'll be seeing that okay what is the basically what is my data type and how what is my data type of my columns so as you can see all are float and integers only uh, float are these and only one is integer that is might be the age okay the one is the age is the integer then we'll see that if our data contains any null values or not so hopefully your data is not having any of the null values uh, so if it would have been having the null values then we would have to deal with the, the null values which uh, which in the by the different methods which include like we can replace the null values with the mean median mode values or we can replace it with a some with a recent uh, sample application sample variable or any of that sort right? but there are no null values present so now uh, the next thing I'll be doing is I'll be plotting a heat map, right? Uh, so now in that, uh, for that I'll be using the C1 library. So earlier I have imported the matplotlib library which is also for visualization. Now C1 library is basically a library which is also for visualization direct of con complex uh complex uh, variables or complex visualization techniques. That means the, the for example, the heat map, okay? There are different heat map present. Uh, in this, uh, we'll be plotting a figure. Uh, in this I, I'll be saying that okay import C1 is SNS then I'll be saying okay plot a figure of the size I have given the size of this then I'm saying okay plot and heat map in which for the data for the sake of data what I am doing I am providing a correlation matrix okay now if I'll see that if I'll directly write what is uh, a correlation matrix so when you'll see in a numerical format this is my correlation matrix basically it correlates it gives the correlation between my each and every feature um on, okay each and every feature if it is negative that means it is negatively correlated positive means positively correlated higher the value higher is the correlation so now what i have done i just simply visualize this data with the help of heat map now i cannot understand i have to look at each and every variable in this but in this i can see that okay which is highly correlated or not with or negatively or positively with the help of these color schemes also that the negative to positive color scheme is given and everything is given so i can easily say that okay how my data is correlated if they are positively correlated negatively correlated highly correlated not highly correlated all of these things okay so now what we'll be doing then i'll also be plotting a scatter plot 
Now in this, I am plotting a scatter plot for all my variables. The same what I did is similarly as I did for correlation, right? My correlation is predicted for each and every variable for cement to uh, for cement to blast furnace slag, fly ash to competitive slant, age to water. For in the same thing, I plotted a scatter plot. What I did, I used a for loop in that I said that okay for i in df columns, I have defined I defined a certain variable in df dot columns. Then I said okay file for j in df columns. I have I chosen my x value. I have chosen my y value. They these will be two different values. So now I am saying plot a figure. Then I am saying plot a scatter plot between them. I am passing my x value as my i. I am passing my j value as my j. So now it will iterate for all how that many times that uh, for that many times in which my all the variables are covered. Right? If my all the variables are covered, that means for that many time it will iterate and plot a scatter plot for for with the help of this as you can see my scatter plot is plotted for each and every variable now from this i can have an idea okay how my variables are distributed and how my variables are correlated right as you can see if the plot plot is in a straight line which is this is a cement or this cement graph so obviously it will be a straight line because all the variables are same but in this for the concrete compressive strength variables see how my different strengths are related from the blast furnace slag and uh, then fly ash first the cement scatter plot is plotted with for all these things for all the different uh, variables are uh, you know for all the different variables so i can see my scatter plot for all of these for cement versus water cement versus uh, super uh, plasticizer so much cement versus coarse aggregate similarly okay you can execute this command and have a look at your own and analyze okay how my data is distributed and how my data are there as you can see for cement for different ages and cement it is almost the same concrete compressive strength for uh, all the different spray age for cement and age it is the uh, same for different age criteria right so similarly for the all the different things now first the cement was plotted then for all the variables the x axis will be blast furnace slag similarly the x x x uh, x variable will change for all for all the different attributes so as you can see there are many number of scatter plots which will be plotting so this is basically a very good method of uh, seeing things or seeing okay how my data is distributed or how my data are correlated as you can see there are numerous amounts of scatter plot you can have a look at it and you can see okay how are these uh, how are these distributed and all of these things so now uh, the next thing what we'll be doing is we'll be doing some outlier analysis uh, so every uh, data is outlier right so we'll be seeing okay what is the outlier for this for that I have, what I have done I have defined a function in that I have defined it as an outlier I am passing my data and then I am passing my column I am saying plot a figure I have given a size then I am saying plot a box plot for it it is a very simple function I am just iterating my uh, in for different columns and I am plotting my um, box plot for all of these so as you can see the black marks are my outliers I am getting my outliers for all but uh, hopefully there are not much outliers in our data many of our outlier free and only some of our having two to three outliers so now we can replace the outliers then how we'll be doing that we can replace the outliers by replacing it with the maximum and minimum value okay we can only we can replace or remove these outliers basically what i'll be doing i'll be removing these outliers uh, uh, how I, I will see that first let us see that what are the maximum and minimum values for it so for that i've i've defined a function end value show so now what this will do i have printed minimum value of dash is dash I am in max value. So now what I have I have giving I am taking columns the it will be printing minimum value of that column and then I am saying okay data dot column dot minimum and data dot column dot maximum it will just it will just provide me the minimum and maximum value value for that that is the this bar value. So I am just iterating the function for all my columns uh, now as you can see this is my uh, column minimum value uh, is this maximum value of this for every other attribute so now i can replace the um, this is basically the maximum value this outlier right from this and i can have a look okay how my outlier is for uh, outlier is how far is my outlier with my 100 percentile of the data so now this is my 100 percentile that means for concrete compressive strength the maximum value is 82.6 and my 100 percentile data is 80 percent that means my outlier is not too much far so i can re i can uh, I 
there is no need to replace the route tar because this is uh, very close to my endpoint value so now what i'll be doing i'll be replace removing the outliers which are very far away from the endpoint values that means for the age value blast furnace lagins super plastic i am taking only those data set uh, in which they are having the i am taking the data set between the 0th percentile to the 100th percentile only for example if uh, for the blast furnace lag i am taking the data less than 350 so if you will see in the blast furnace lag blast furnace lag the data outlier is uh, far away from 350 but my uh, uh, my 100 percentile value is this so i have take i have taken the data from this only so this uh, very few data will be removed and this will create no other uh, no other effect in our data and our data will be more cleaner so now uh, i have replaced my outliers so this was all about my data visualization and feature engine uh, basic data pre processing techniques so now in the next section we'll be doing uh, a little bit of feature engineering because this is a very small data set there's not much to do uh, so we'll be doing a little bit of feature engineering then we'll be splitting our data and making our data ready for our model uh, dip, uh, model building techniques hello all welcome to the next section of our project now after the data analysis and all of these things uh, data pre processing thing the last thing left before be our model development phase is the feature engineering so now what feature engineering in this we are in the in the feature engineering we create or drop different features in order to you know basically this is done by a domain knowledgeable person who knows that okay what features can be my important we can create new features we can see okay what are the different features Uh, which can help in our better prediction we can create different features with a domain knowledge so that is basically a feature engineering so now in this uh, there is a very small data set and we don't know much about this obviously this is a civil engineering project so we'll be doing uh, the basic basic uh, basic feature engineering based on our data analysis uh, data analysis we did earlier so now first let us have a look at our data so now this is our data and uh, this is our columns so now previously na na previously in the uh, by plotting the heat map and the data and the scatter plot which i plotted i found out that the blast furnace lag core segregate and fine segregate are not much correlated with the with my concrete compressive strength okay when i when you will see the heat map if if you will see the heat map then you will say If also if you want to see the scatter plot also so now in the blast furnace blast blast furnace and concrete comp as you can see 0.13 okay this is a very less correlation and similarly the flash minus 0.11 so uh, this is not much correlated with my uh, concrete is uh, concrete compressive strength so what i can do i can basically drop this so it will my model will have less data but it will perform well okay it will split or it will make the data well it will fit my data well so that is why i am dropping these columns i am just basically using the um, drop command and in place is equals to true then if i'll see my df dot columns so these are my final columns which i which are left and if i want to plot a heat map between them want to plot a heat map so this is basically the heat map so now in this when you will see that okay now in this variable many of my all of my variables are highly at least some of them are correlated in a better way with the concrete compressive strength for example if we will take age it is 0.52 correlated uh, super plastic is 0.41 water is minus 0.38 fly ash is this and cement is 0.4 that means that this is uh, basically we can see okay these are correlated and this will give some effect to our compressive strength so that's why we replace the we remove those previous columns because they were of no use they were not showing any of our relatability with our dependent variable so now this is our feature engineering also done as i said is a very small data set so this is not much to do when if there is some do domain knowledgeable person or he knows that okay if i can multiply divide or add new columns so it will be of more help you can do it if you have and uh, some uh, a person from civil engineering background if you are a person from civil engineering background you might have you must have known okay what are the different other categories which i can form with this which will help in uh, predicting my compressive strength uh, so you can take it as an assignment when you do it on your own but this is for uh, this is for now for this project in the feature engineering part so now in the next section what we'll be doing we'll be splitting our data so it the splitting our data is very simple i'll just be taking Uh, x and y in that i the x are my what x are my independent variables independent variables 
sorry and uh, these are my dependent variables this is my dependent variables what i have did is in the x command i have said okay df dot drop the concrete cement strength and uh, in the y i have taken only that concrete compressive strength option so now what I, the last thing what i have to do is to split my data so in this i am i am using a train test split function this is the most common method which you can use for the uh, splitting our data and you can import it from train uh, model selection what i am doing i am just passing my function i am passing my x data this and y data this then i have written text size is equals to 0.3 which means that means that it will be splitting our data with a 70 30 ratio 70 percent for the train data 30 percent for the test data random state you can select any of the random state so now then my data is splitted okay now if you want to see what is my shape of data so this is my x train shape now if you want to see what is my test shape yeah so this is my 286 the 286 uh, rows were selected as my test that is the 70 percent of the 1030 total data and five columns so now this is basically our data is ready the one more thing also you can do is you can uh, standardize this data also right because this is uh, this you can standardize this data also i have not done in this project but you can take it as an extra assignment you can use standard scalar which will scale down your values to a very small common platform or min max scalar which you can scale down your values from 0 to 1 so this is a pretty good thing to feed in your model you can also do that i have not done it here uh, because in the last uh, ultimately we have to uh, demonstrate how you can do this with the help of auto -cara. so it will uh, handle all those operations so now in the next section we'll be seeing how we'll be using the deep learning uh, library that is the kera sequential model for this project hello all welcome to our next section of this project so now previously in the previous sections we have done the data analysis part feature engineering part data pre-processing part so now we have processed our data we have made our data ready to feed our model so now this is our uh, model building section and this will be using our deep learning techniques that is the kera sequential model uh, for this project and we'll be building our model so now what is kera sequential model so now if you'll just google it for it Keras sequential model. So this is the Keras sequential model. Okay. Uh, if you will see that from the definition, Keras document, the sequential model is a linear stack of layers. You can create a sequential model by passing a list of layers instances to the constructor. So now what basically it says that sequential model is basically a model which has different layers. Okay. In the different layers, data is passed and pre and processed and there is a final layer output layer in which my data is given so this is basically a basic archi architecture of a Kera sequential model this is a basically a deep learning technique so now what i'll be doing i'll just be importing from tensorflow because keras is present in tensorflow okay from tensorflow.keras import models and layers layers which means layers is imp important for importing because uh, the layers with the help of layers only i'll be adding different layers so now if uh, I am executing it and uh, uh, if I am executing it uh, so if it is giving you an error if it is giving you an error for tensorflow it means that your tensorflow is not installed in your system you can basically go to a tensorflow documentation and see how you can install tensorflow you can just install it then execute this command it will create no error now in the next what i have done i have defined my model i have said okay models dot sequential that is a that is a sequential model i am saying okay add layers the first layer is this then the second layer i have added is is in for the activation function relu okay there are different activation per functions present you can read what activation functions are there are different loss functions also so you can read okay how what these activation functions are and i have taken the shape from the x train dot i log dot one dot shape basically the shape of the total uh, data and then i have dropped and i did another layer for that i have activation uh, function i have taken is tan h then i'm uh, saying okay uh, combine all these layers model dot add layers then the model dot compile and then i am saying optimizer function is rms pro and loss is mse function and matrix is ma basically my loss function is ma mse function basically the loss function which will be created which will be that is that will be based on my mse function and optimizer will be rms dot prop see that op, it will be optimizing or updating my model with the help of this function 
you can have a documentation of on a kera sequential model in deep learning and see what all these parameters are and how these works in detail now in the next section what did i just simply fit it model dot fit i have given my data x train y train i have given how many epochs i have to perform i have given batch size i have given validation data as my test data you can also create some partition for validation data also and test data for differently but in this i have chosen on other similar on same variation for my validation and test data so now in this this is getting fit it is performing 100 epochs if you don't know what is epoch epoch is basically a complete step of forward propagation and back propagation in a layer that is in one epoch and it is performing 100 epoch now when you will see that uh, after performing epoch my main aim is to reduce my loss function okay my loss function will get reduced and the last epoch my loss function started at Around one three eight four. Okay, and my uh, at the hundred epoch, my loss function is around three twenty three. So now it may be possible that my, my loss function might have reduced the lowest to an another epoch. Like in the epoch number three eighty seven, my loss function reduced to three eighteen, which is uh, less than my last epoch. But it is okay. But the main aim is to reduce my loss function and to select uh, the correct epoch. Uh, so now uh, what I'll do, I'll just evaluate. On my test data, then it is saying, okay, my loss function is this, my MA is this. Okay, now my loss function is reduced more to 276 with my X test and Y test. I'll just simply predict my prediction and I'll okay see it. Okay, okay, my what is my prediction? So I've taken only just uh, one in, one input. Okay, these are my different uh, predictions. So now when if I'll go to then uh, when if I'll go and see, okay, these are my different. It, it is a very long list. So I I have just imported only one uh, one on one of that. So this is my different prediction. So okay, this we see that okay how we can predict it with the help of uh, deep learning, the normal deep learning tech. Now as this model has not performed that much well because our loss function is very big, it should be in the uh, for in, in at least in the decimal integers or close to the one range. Okay, uh, so that is considered a very good loss function. But because it, this is not performed because we have not done any much of the hyper tuning or any of the things. Uh, I have not done because our main purpose is to show how we can do this using the auto keras. Then you said how drastically our uh, our our outputs change when we using the auto keras because it will be doing all of these things automatically. We don't have to perform in any hyper tuning technique which you didn't perform in and obtained this much greater loss function is a very bad accuracy. Okay, so now in the next section we will be seeing that how we can do this, do all of these things with the help of. Automated machine like machine library that is the auto keras. Hello all, welcome to the final section of our project that is the model building using the automated machine learning, the auto keras library. So now in the previous section we have seen the we have builder model using the keras module. So now in this section we will be using the auto keras. So auto keras is an auto ML system based on keras. It is developed by Data Lab at Texas A and M and University. So now the very first thing you have to do, you have to install Auto Keras. Okay, you have to install Auto Keras. For that, you have to write these commands. If you are using a local environment or Google Colab environment, you can simply write this in your uh, in your notebook environment only with an exclamation mark, and you have to install all of these libraries. Okay, this will create basically a environment for the Google Colab. Oh, sorry, Google environment for the uh, TensorFlow Auto Keras. Then this will install Auto Keras. Then it will show why what is my Auto Keras. So it will take some time, a minute or two, depending on your internet speed. As you can see, it is downloading a quite uh, four four fifty four point five MB file is there. So it is downloading a TensorFlow basically. So now in many of the things are already satisfied. It is written requirement already satisfied because I have already installed it on my system. You can install it in the command prompt from the command prompt also. But if you want to see the installation happening in your notebook for documentation purpose, you can directly install it on your notebook. But make sure to restart your notebook when you first install it because uh, whenever you install a library, the Google Colab environment or a Jupyter local Jupyter environment does not read it after it gets installed. Unless and until you will not uh, restart your runtime, it will not read that library. So in order to read your library which is newly installed, you have to restart your runtime, then it will read your library. So now as you can see, it is basically saying requirement already satisfied. So it is basically uninstalling the libraries which is just installed because these were already present. So it will take a minute or uh, it will take a minute uh, or two more. Then I have written a command it, uh, which says that pip 
show auto keras pip show auto keras so now it is saying restart runtime but i'll not do this because i have uh, already um, i have already installed it okay i don't need to re rerun it so it is uh, i have given a command pip show auto keras it is showing me the details of the auto keras what is the version the summary this is the home page of auto keras that is the author email the license and all of these different things this is the requirement packages all of these things now we'll import auto keras we'll first import uh, okay, it is not important. So I have to restart my runtime. I'll just restart my runtime for a one time. So now the very uh, thing is when you restart your runtime, you have to perform all of these steps again. Okay, uh, if you want to read your data, you have to import all thing. You have to perform all of these steps again. So now if I import my auto keras, it will not create any problem. As you see, this is imported. Okay, this was what I was saying uh, when you have to import how you have to import your auto keras so uh, i'll just uh, write uh, define my model or could or structured data regressor so i this is a regression problem that is why i'm using ak dot structured data regressor you can go to their website and see their documentation what are the different commands you can use for regression basically for structured data image data there is a different command for defining our function but uh, all of these things so now i'll be using the same data which i used for the previous uh, sections but as i restarted my runtime i have to again load my model i have to again load my model and uh, do all of these uh, and do all of the data pre-processing techniques again i'll just do all of these things again uh, it will take only a minute uh, this is basically the scatter plot i will i don't want this this is also a data which now in this uh, I'll just uh, replace the outliers and uh, the feature engineering technique which we did um, then we'll just split our data we'll just split our data and perfect so now this is our test data so now we can simply pass this data into our auto keras model I am just uh, I am just saying okay uh, I am just uh, defining my model is ak dot structured regressor then I'll say override is equals to true and I'm saying max trials is equals to three. Then I'll say reg dot fit. It what it will do? It will fit my data. Uh, it will fit. I am passing my data. I am passing my data as X train and Y train. X data is my X train data which I have used and Y train is my Y train data. So now it is basically fitting my model uh, all over the. Uh, it is basically fitting my model. Then I'll see okay what are the different uh, uh, what are the different changes which are occurred when I did it using the Keras module without any hyperparameter tuning and simply passing my data. As you see that we had a very big loss function, but in this. Uh, we, I am passing the same data, but we, we, when you will see that there is a huge difference in our accuracy and our results when you are using the auto keras. What, but because what auto keras is doing, it is basically uh, it is uh, basically checking all my models and all the different parameters which can happen for a auto keras uh, for in a uh, auto keras module and giving me the best possible outcomes. So now I am. It it may take some time because obviously it is getting fitted, uh, and uh, it is a huge operation. It is a not much big data set, but again it will take some time. Uh, basically a minute or two to get fitted completely. By that time we'll see the different other take care other things. The next step what we'll be doing. So now in the next next step what we'll be doing I'm I'll be evaluating a model. The same thing which I did earlier in the Keras mod um, Keras module also that I evaluated it. So I just evaluated it. I may I'll say reg dot evaluate. I am passing my test data. I am passing my test data and my y test data which is present uh, now. As you can see, it is getting evaluated now. It is using 271 epochs, right? It is selected my epochs on my own. It did the all the calculation behind it and it has selected the right epoch which is necessary. So now it is selected 271 epochs. Previously we selected only 100 epochs. Okay. So now in this section only the epochs it the loss function is reduced drastically. As you can see, the last loss function is reduced drastically. In the loss function is 57. My input loss function was around 1000. It has reduced to 57. And in, in my previous deep learning model which I used. My loss function was around the least loss function around 318. So now how see how drastically it has changed and how good my auto keras has performed. So now I'll just simply evaluate this model on my X test data and my Y test data. Okay, then I'll just predict it. Okay, I'll predict my results and store it under Y hat test. 
then i'll see my model summary okay how my model is used and what are the different use it as it says in the first layer which is used is the relu function is used in both the relu function is used in both the layer it is taken two layer and all of these are the different parameters and uh, i think total parameters the trainable total parameters are these non trainable total parameters are these so now i'll just see i'll be seeing my predictions so this is my prediction okay these are my predictions then i'll um, just see and these are my oh, base, sorry this is my uh, predictions only this is my predictions and uh, this is my test data so you can compare it okay it is basically the similar to it only so now, as you can see how good my model is performed uh, because uh, because of the following things because of the autocrast library and how low my loss function is okay you can also do the hyper tuning in autocrast also you can see their documentation and you can see how you can do the same and perform very good model. this was basically a general introduction of how you can make a small uh, project with the help of this so all the notebooks and data is provided to you you can uh, import you can uh, execute this model line by line it will perform the same you can make some changes then you can even apply this knowledge to other data sets and make new projects out of it thank you